The smell is something you never forget. We've gone to properties before where we can smell it from the street before we even enter the property. Um, and then the neighbours have usually tipped off the police because they can smell it uh, from next door or they can see thousands of flies on the windows trying to get out. So it's usually a key indicator. And a lot of these properties on the inside, you know, there's bathtubs full of faeces, um, there's rotten food and mould and needles and, and blood and urine and you name it inside these properties. The other side is the, you know, the unattended deaths. Often they're recluse in nature and um, they're living in filth and squalor and they're hoarders. Um, so it's not necessarily just the, the death cleanup that we're sort of looking after, it's the, the entire property. You know, if someone's been dead in a property for three weeks, then the odour permeates all your contents, all your rubbish. So you can clean up that one area where the body was, but there's still going to be a significant amount of odour uh, in the property. So we end up doing a full decontamination clean of the entire property. So uh, every wall, every surface gets washed with antimicrobials um, to the point where it looks presentable to, to someone to purchase. Today we were at an unattended death. An uh, elderly gentleman who passed away in his, in his bed um, lived a, a simple life, is uh, the last of his family from what we understand, he has no next of kin, um, hence why a lot of his, uh, anything that's valuable gets donated to charity. The smell at the moment is probably a, a 6 out of 10 um, for an unattended death that we've attended. Uh, this one's mostly contained to the bedroom. Um, the odour is throughout the property, but the bedroom's, bedroom's quite smelly. And this room has been sitting like this for about four weeks, we estimate, from the time we um, quoted the job to the time that it was approved by the insurance company. Okay, so here's your typical unintended death scene. Um, this gentleman, elderly gentleman, was dead for approximately one to two weeks. Um, you can see where he's been, been sitting on the side of the bed. The two feet marks on the ground, one's obviously quite extensive compared to the other. So you can see that a lot of the body fluid has absorbed through the carpet here. It will be damaged to the subfloor underneath, which we assume at the moment is concrete. And obviously he's laid back in bed and passed away um, and been here unattended for between one and two weeks, um, judging by the amount of contamination and um, body fluid that's uh, absorbed into the mattress. So if we lift the mattress here, we should be able to see uh, how extensive it was. Now, if they're an older person and they're quite slim, um, they're not going to have a lot of body fluid leak out of, the, out of them when they, when they um, pass away. We'll cut out the affected area. So you can see, obviously, it's gone through the top layer into the underlay. We'll be able to treat this. Uh, we won't need to encapsulate it. There's not a lot of staining. Uh, once we're finished, you won't even notice that there was someone that passed away in the room. So what we'll do here. On a scale of severity, this is probably a four out of 10 um, in comparison to what we've seen. So the larger the person, um, the more fluid and more damage that they're going to do. And the longer that they're unattended, obviously the, the the more contamination again um, as they leak out and absorb into building materials. This is quite extensive so a lot of it has been absorbed in the doona that he's had on the bed which makes our job a little bit easier. Um, it's not always contained to a bed, sometimes they're actually on the floor. There's tiles, uh, it runs across the tiles into your frames of your, of your building and then there's structural damage that we have to attend to. We've been called out to a job where they were uh, unattended for four months in bed with an electric blanket on in a brick house, all closed up. Uh, and that was, that was pretty extensive. That was a 10 out of 10 as far as odour was concerned because they were basically cooking in bed in a closed up house that was brick. So uh, it took us a while to get the odour out of that property. We get approached by people every week who think it's, it's a glamorous cleaning job because they've watched a lot of CSI. And then we first day we bring them on site, um, they walk in the door and that's the end of it. They feel like vomiting because they can't handle the odour. 
It's a very physically demanding job. Uh, sometimes we have to empty properties of furniture. It's almost like you become a removalist. All right, I'm gonna take a breather. <laughs> yeah, he was in the Navy. So any wills, paperwork? Getting an insight into the person, the way they lived, um, what their hobbies were, lived a, a simple life. He looks like he's got an old recipe book or recipes that he's put together. So we've got curried sausages, green zucchini, boiled fruit cake. So it gives you a bit of an idea of the sort of person he was, what he ate, uh, what he liked to cook. We, you know, we come across photos sometimes of, the, of um, friends and family. Um, in this case, it was more friends than family um, because his, obviously his family's passed away as well. Uh, so now what we're doing is going through all the personal effects. Um, the, it's a deceased estate, this one, there's no next of kin. Um, so we'll take all the uh, memorabilia, uh, the trophies and personal, personal items. Um, they'll be boxed up and donated to the local bowls club. Yeah, so this elderly gentleman um, hadn't turned up to his sporting club for a few weeks. Um, and they're the ones who sort of notified authorities. Um, that there might be something wrong, um, who came around obviously and found him deceased. Um, the rest of the personal items will be sanitised if they're valuable and donated to charity. And then permeable items that are made of timber, fabric um, or porous that hold the odour, um, they'll be disposed of. Dirty old crockery and cutlery that nobody's going to want. Um, this is only a small unit, um, so this will be a fairly quick job in comparison to a, a large house with a lot of content. Well, there is there's, there's more isolation now. I think the society, our society's changed. We don't have that um, community uh, aspect that we used to in a lot of areas. So people don't talk to their neighbours. You know, they're, they're at war with their neighbours, um, and everyone knows what that's like. You know, it's it's not that community where everyone checks up on everyone anymore. They don't share, you know, produce like they used to back in the days. Everyone's very focused on work and everyone's so busy. You don't notice your neighbor um, hasn't been out for two weeks. Um, it's, just, it's just the community factor's gone. So you tend to find that there are a lot of unattended deaths because people don't visit, people don't check up on their neighbors. There's been, there's been a few situations where we've gotten to a property where the the occupant's only been dead for one or two days um, and they have had neighbours that they've talked to because they've been sick and said, well, if you don't open your blinds uh, each morning, then I'll come around and check up on you, you know, and obviously this one morning he didn't open his blinds and um, the neighbour across, across the street went across and obviously he'd passed, um, so she was able to find the body and we were able to clean the scene up pretty quickly and it wasn't horrific because he'd only been dead for a day. Um, but it's rare that that happens. You know, it's rare that you've got someone who will, is willing to check up on you and just make sure you're okay. So, yeah, it's sad, really. It's everyday occurrence, everybody dies. Um, we just get to see a different side of life, I guess, to what people expect. <laughs> 